welcome back to Deb's Big Backyard on the Road. I'm Deb. And how often do you come across a, a prescribed burn for native plants in your own backyard, your neighborhood? Well, I did. Doug Chen is doing it now. Let's see what's up. What's burning in our neighborhood? Well, this is all native Illinois prairie, savanna, and native woodland plants. Yeah. This is a native landscaped yard. And as part of regular maintenance and keeping it healthy and happy, uh, we burn it. And we do it in full cooperation with the Village of Oak Park. Got all our permits. Um, had my kids' class come over and watch. It was a nice educational opportunity. And uh, yeah, we set it all on fire. And why do you do this with your native garden? Sure. So all native ecosystems in this part of Illinois have to have fire. And without regular fire, either every year or every other year, they get sick and they start dying. This is basically a mini ecosystem of prairie and savanna. So, because it's a native ecosystem, you gotta burn it. What is happening after this? After the, it's down to ash, and what's the next phase for this garden? Sure, after the ash goes down, uh, if we get a nice rain, that'll cause the ash, which is basically a nice fertilizer to soak into the ground. Depending on the weather or how much rain we get, we can expect this to see turning green in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely this will green up faster than parts that aren't burned. And yeah. the plants will grow bigger, have more flowers, they'll be healthier, win-win. Uh, should anybody do this for no. their native garden? No, no. Why? It is a critical tool, a critical part of maintaining a healthy native garden, but fire is a dangerous tool. And like any tool, you have to be trained to use it properly. And mm -hmm. if you aren't, things can go bad and people get hurt. So mm -hmm. uh, I have, for example, have some certifications from the National Wildfire Coordinating Group. Um, I've had almost 20 years, over 20 years experience doing prescribed fires. I guess if you can't burn it, say it's too close to your house, um, you could trim it back, but I would wait a few weeks. Okay. Uh, you're still going to have eggs overwintering in the dead foliage, so you want to leave those. Yeah. You could also just cut it back real low and then maybe not burn it, but maybe set it off to the side of one part of the yard. When you're talking about eggs in that foliage, you're talking about those pollinators. Yeah, those pollinators, pollinators, things like your monarchs and other native beetles, other little native critters. This kind of prairie kind of life is coming more to the suburban things. Are you trying to bring back the natural kind of uh, uh, approach? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, when we first moved here almost 15 years ago, we had, you know, like most people, just lawn grass. It was ugly, sterile, and it didn't support life. Right. And that's what I love about native landscapes is they support life, unlike bluegrass lawns. They do not support life. Right. Butterflies, birds, all kinds of insects. And it even stimulates, you know, when my daughter was a little baby, she loved crawling around in the grasses and the flowers. You don't get that in a bluegrass lawn. Well, I think that about does it for Deb's Big Backyard on the Road. I'm Deb. I'm Doug. We'll see you next time.